Hey, Res Church. Uh, This is Pastor Daniel with another episode of our Supercharged podcast. Uh, Supercharged is our leadership development and discipleship program at Resurrection Church, uh, where we do group leader training, uh, leader training and development, really working on our pipeline of both uh, character and uh, competencies. And so we believe leadership has uh, both. Uh, There are skills you need to learn And there's character development that needs to be done in every individual to be transformed into a better disciple maker. And uh, on a lot of these uh, podcasts, we're primarily covering the the skills, the competencies. And in our in-person sessions on Sunday nights, we're covering the character development, both in our big sessions and in our one-on-one mentorship and group mentorship. And so uh, one of the the primary categories. We have a few categories of competencies in our pipeline matrix. One of those is vision or what we call casting vision. And it talks a lot about uh, the various types of skills and competencies that need to be developed at different levels of leadership when it comes to casting vision. And so I wanna spend a little bit of time in this episode kind of parsing that out, uh, defining some of the terms that go into vision and to talking about um, kind of where uh, leaders need to get really uh, need to get better at certain things, and, and and where our responsibilities lie. Also, want to spend a little bit of time just kind of looking at some different levels of leadership: personal leadership, family leadership, small group leadership, uh, and then larger team leadership. And, and kind of look at how casting vision is still uh, essential in all of those uh, areas of leadership. It's just going to look a little bit different. And obviously, the, the the methodology of that vision of casting and communicating that vision will be a little bit different. So. Let's just talk about uh, vision for a while. And then uh, probably at the end of this uh, podcast, of this episode, we'll talk a little bit about momentum, which is just intrinsically linked to vision uh, in an organization, in a church, in a family. It's intrinsically linked. So we're going to talk about that as well. Uh, and we'll talk about the elements of momentum today, uh, which which vision is part of that. We'll talk a little, little bit about vision drift today and how that occurs um, and then we'll look at kind of the formula for vision, uh, or I'm sorry, the formula for momentum today, which absolutely uh, you'll you'll see the the link here to vision in uh, in any uh, organization, any church, uh, even inside uh, small um, family units and and relationships and things like that. So, what's vision? Well, vision is one part of uh, three things uh, that go into momentum, and so we're gonna we're gonna look at that today. If you think about the mission of a church or an organization or maybe even a family, which is the, you know, kind of the motivation. So at Resurrection Church, you know, we exist uh, to to do the things that Jesus left us here on earth to do, to be worshipers of God and to develop a gospel culture. We want to reach uh, the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We want to make the name of Jesus famous. That's our motivation. That's our mission. And a vision is different because a vision really is more about the the, the specific uh, way in which we're going to get that done. In fact, I, we might even say the vision is the where, it's the destination. It's like, what would it look like for us to actually get that done? In fact, what would it look like if we were to begin to achieve some of the goals that we have in our church or in your organization, you know, what would that look like? And so we'll, we're going to look at that a little bit. And then there's the idea of strategy or planning. Some of you guys are strategists, you're planners, you love to talk about how things are going to happen. And that is the how. That, I would call that the machination, you know, all the little logistical details for how something's going to happen. So you have your mission, you have your vision, you have your strategy, but we're going to work really on vision today. Um, vision is really important in an organization. It's, it's the ability to see uh, or experience, or maybe even feel what it would look like if our effort towards something w- w- was successful. What would it look like if that were done? And, and you've got to be able to see it in order to stay motivated to grind through uh, the, the energy that it takes to get anything difficult done. And so let me give you just a couple examples because I've been talking kind of in more, more theoretical. The Apostle Paul will consistently in his letters in the New Testament paint a picture of what it's going to look like when we get to heaven. What it's going to look like when we no longer have these earthly bodies. What it's going to look like when we're we're no longer living in a in a in a temporary world is what he calls this place, you know, in this tent, this this humble body, this humble earth. But but it, but 
you, you know, instead in our mansion, in this temple that God has, has for us in heaven, you know. And so he again and again paints various parts of visions and pictures of heaven, of what it'll look like to one day be with Jesus. Why? Well, it's a reminder that the effort now is is worth it and it's going towards something that we're we're working really hard because God's left us things to do. Uh, but but there's a day coming where we won't be working really hard anymore. Instead, we'll be there with with Jesus. Uh, Proverbs would actually say, it says, without a vision, the people perish. And so uh, in your your church, there are things that um, get laid out before you and uh, the, the, the elders that the leadership want to get done. But for that to really take hold, at some point, the church has to be able in their minds to kind of see what it would look like if those things got done. Uh, Bill Hybels years ago would actually say it this way. He would say that vision really is is getting people from here, which is the, the, the point we're at today in an organization, in a church, in a family, what have you, to there. And there is is the destination. It's the the thing that we're trying to get to. And, and that process of leading people to that is, is is casting vision. And and I as a leader want to make it as tangible to someone as possible. I want to I want them to see it. I want them to be able to feel it. I want them to to feel some of the emotion that they might feel if if they we we got that thing done, if we accomplished that thing. Why? Because living in the now is is difficult. It's hard. Uh, there's going to be failures and and missteps. There's going to be um mistakes. It's, it's going to feel like we backslide at times and, and stuff doesn't get done. And so uh, it's easy to get worn out. It's easy to not have enough endurance to keep going and persevere. And so uh, we, we as leaders need to continually remind those that we lead and those around us and those that we encourage that what we're doing is worth it. And, and one of the ways we do that is we continue to paint the picture of uh, what it would look like if we got this done. Let me just let me just give you a couple simple examples uh, in your in your family. Maybe you're budgeting to uh, buy a house, and so you, you know one of the ways that uh, you remind each other that it's you know worth it to not eat out, that it's worth it to save that extra money and, and scrimp a little bit, and make sure you get your recycling in and save those pennies, is you talk to one another, you verbalize and paint the picture of what it would be like to finally own your own home. And you you talk about it. You don't, you don't assume that everyone just is going to remember for years as you save and scrimp and work toward it, but you, 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 uh, you're painting that mental image of what it would look like to have saved enough money to be able to buy your, your own home, as an example. If, even personally, you're uh, you're dieting or you're, you're working out and you're sore and you're hungry and you got to remind yourself or have someone remind you how, how awesome it would be to be past some of the health problems you have or to be in, a, in better shape and have more energy. And, and so getting a good picture of what all the current effort and work and energy will lead to is part of casting vision. And it is, it's critical to keep us imperfect, inconsistent humans actually moving toward the goal that we know intellectually we want, but oftentimes in the moment emotionally we can forget about. And so casting vision uh, is is uh, critical for leaders because we're in charge of teams of people and, and they're all going to go through different seasons, uh, different emotions, different failures, different ebb and flow of life. And we've got to be able to paint this picture when Moses is going to lead the Egyptians out of Egypt or uh, the Hebrews out of Egypt, uh, followed by the Egyptians, and and into the wilderness again and again. God and Moses have to remind the people what the promised land is going to look like, because there are plenty of reasons for them to grumble and complain and be fearful, and they do. Uh, and so you consistently see them have to go back to remember what God has in store for you that it's worth this current effort. So casting vision is important. It's important as a corporate leader, a church leader. It's important as a team leader. It's important as a family leader. It's important in your personal life, in a small group. Being able to cast vision is important. If you want to change something in your small group, you've got to be able to cast the vision for that and and paint the picture for that. And if not, you're going to have a difficult time helping to motivate people to continue the effort and and work toward the progress and the, and the, the end goal. Now, 
uh, if we were to break down casting vision to even smaller parts, uh, we, we, we are going to paint the picture of where we're going, of why it's amazing, of what we're trying to get done. We're also going to explain why we can't stay where we're at. So in some sense, we're going to explain why the current state of things is not acceptable or it's not okay. Uh, and we've got it. We've got to get to that other place, right? So we're, we're in some sense comparing the current to what we want to get to and, 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 and create some urgency, and create some motivation in the gap between where we're at and where we need to get to. And um, there, there is skill in that concept and the ability to do that. You can get better at it. Some people are naturally good at it, but you can get better at it. You can work at it. Um, you can remind yourself of it. So that's, that's a vision. That's casting vision. Now, what is vision at drift and and vision leak. Those are two terms you'll hear at different times you're reading books and stuff. Um, we're not going to talk a lot about vision leak. I'll just say this. Um, think of vision as, uh, you know, vision leak is, is imagine there's a, a bucket. Every one of your, the people you lead, whether it's in your family, it's in a small group, it's in a team, uh, it's in an organization, they all have a bucket. And when you do a great job casting vision and creating that motivation and urgency for going from here to there, it fills that bucket up and they get energy from it. They're fueled by it. But over time, if you did nothing, it slowly leaks out. It just slowly does. So it has to be continually refilled. And uh, and so that's just a concept we'll cover at some some point when, you, when we talk about that in more detail. Vision Drift's a little different. Vision Drift's not about people running out of the energy and the motivation to work on, on, an, on a project or an endeavor. It's really uh, about changing the end goal, moving the goalposts. Um, and, and Bill Hybels would say it this way, the drift in life is always to a lesser vision. So what naturally happens with humans, because we're imperfect and consistent people, is that over time, uh, if if the leader is not stepping in and, and reaffirming the vision and, and casting it again and, and firming it back up, is the vision moves and it becomes lesser and it gets off course. And then the next thing you know, we're doing something it actually doesn't help us with the original vision. It 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 it, it only helps us toward this this uh, new <laughs> goalpost that we accidentally moved because it sort of drifted off on its own and we weren't didn't do a good job reaffirming it. And that's why there's a repetitiveness that has to happen to casting vision. We have to go back and do it again and clarify it again and do it again because we're forgetful and consistent people. Um, so this can occur for different reasons uh, when you aren't painting the picture with enough detail. If you're not painting that, that end vision with enough detail, you can get vision drift where different people have different ideas of what you're actually trying to get done, right? That's on the leader to, to clarify. Uh, second reason is when the leader is not modeling it. So if you're not modeling the work toward that vision, the work toward that endeavor, uh, then you're going to have other people begin to not model that as well, and you're going to see drift. And then thirdly, you reinforce. You re reinforce uh, the vision by... Uh, praising, celebrating, and honoring the effort and work and energy when it's on on task, going toward that vision that is set in the small group, in the family, in the organization. And you reinforce by correcting when it's off. Uh, both of those are, are ways to reinforce the vision. If you were to stay silent in the face of both good and bad when it, in regards to vision, you'll find that it will drift because you're not affirming when it's going well um, when people are putting in real effort toward it, and you're not correcting when they're they're off, uh, and so ultimately you'll watch it you'll watch it change. Uh, now, momentum is kind of important, and I mentioned it earlier, and I want to talk a little bit about it. Momentum is kind of a formula, and I don't want to get like too much into physics and math here, but mo momentum is a bit of a formula, right? So if you think about uh, mass. So, so, so the, just the total volume of something, like how, how much you've got mass times velocity, how fast is it going? Uh, plus the direction, you, you're going to really have a nice formula for momentum. And so what I mean by that is mass is really how many people are, um, are, are part of this endeavor. So in your family, maybe it's a few. You know, a personal endeavor, maybe you're by yourself. In a small group, maybe you got 10, 12, 15 people. Uh, in a church, you might have hundreds, right? So, so, so mass is one of the things because one person moving really fast in a direction isn't a momentum. It's just one person working really hard. But you get a crowd of people. Oh, it's a little different, right? We have a lot of people now. We have a lot of effort. We have a lot of energy. We have a lot of people can contribute. Velocity is the second part. 
So velocity is really about, you know, how quickly change will happen. If you had a mass of people, so we have a lot, mass is, is, is high, but no one's moving, no one's doing anything, we're not going to have momentum. We're just sitting. Um, so there, there, there is going to have to be movement. And then third is direction because you could have a mass of people and they could all be moving, but if they're moving in different directions, you can't get momentum because they all have their own agendas and they're all doing different things. They're all, they all got a different vision or they're all moving in uh, so, some other place. So you need all three to get momentum. And that is you need a group of people your small group, uh, a ministry, a team, the whole church. Uh, that's the mass. You need speed, philosophy. So they've got to actually be moving. They've got to be energy and effort and change here that's happening. And then third, and this is the big one, got to be moving in the same direction toward the same goal with the same general types of activities. Uh, then all three, now we can talk about actually having momentum. And momentum is really important when you're trying to get things done, when you're trying to accomplish goals. Uh, momentum is, 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 is critical because uh, momentum makes everything better. Uh, John Maxwell, the leadership guru, would call it the great exaggerator. Momentum makes leaders look better. It makes followers look more effective. It, look, it makes insurmountable problems suddenly not look as daunting as they were. It's a powerful change agent. It's uh, much easier to steer momentum than it is to start momentum. Getting momentum started is the hardest thing because you've got to get a bunch of people. There's your mass. You got to get them all moving. That's hard to do. And you got to get them moving in the same direction. And oftentimes it feels like you're herding cats when you have, you're dealing with a lot of different people. Um, when we talk about momentum, vision is intrinsically tied because in order for everyone to move in the same direction and, and, and put their energy and effort into it, they have to share the same vision. They have to share the same vision. They have to share this picture of where everyone, you know, the church, the organization, the group is headed, and they have to have bought into it. So momentum starts inside the leader because it's the leader's job to cast the vision and uh, reinforce the vision and clarify the vision and model the behavior towards the vision. So the the from the leader flows the passion, the conviction as to the vision. So, you know, you think about in your family, if you said, you know, um, the family, our family needs to get healthier in terms of the way we eat. And you're going to set some goals. Boy, your passion, your conviction, your behavior that you're modeling as part of that. Uh, the vision you create of what, how healthy the family could be and what that would mean for the family. Like those things will matter a lot if you want the whole family to get on board and begin moving in that direction. Now, just some caveats about casting vision uh, and at any point, right? Uh, family, team, group, uh, large organization or church. People will not buy into the vision if they don't buy into the leader. And so just understand, and we, we have some other uh, skills we'll talk about at different times about, you know, leadership is really influence and, and we're not going to go into those today. But I, if you find that you're struggling painting the picture, casting the vision of where something's going and getting people to buy into it, the first thing you might check is, do they buy into me? Uh, do, do they look to me? Are they willing to follow me? Because that's a, that's a big deal. If they won't, if they don't trust you as a leader, they're not going to trust your vision. If they don't buy into you as a leader, they're not going to buy into your vision. And so I, I've experienced that for lots of seasons of my leadership life where I felt like the idea and the vision were good and I couldn't understand why people weren't buying into it. And the fact of the matter was they didn't buy into me. Or they didn't trust me. It was ineffective leadership, not an ineffective vision. And so it, it, you know, it starts there before it starts anywhere else. But vision's essential. It, it is an essential element to leadership. If you're going to lead at any level, a family level, a group level, a team level, church level, organization, you, you have to be able to paint pictures of where the organization's going and why it matters to get there. Why you can't stay where you're at. And people must believe in you to believe in your vision. Uh, everyone in your organization, in your team or your small group, at whatever level, needs to be able to answer the question about what the vision is. So, so if you were to just take someone from your team and go, hey, what is it you guys are trying to get done? And what would it look like if you got it done? If your team can't, team members can't answer that, then they don't really know the vision. Uh, and if they don't answer that with a lot of passion, then they probably don't buy into the vision. So they may have the right answer, but they don't actually believe the answer, right? So these are good checks in your, your, your group, your team, your organization. 
You have to paint a clear picture and you have to model that consistent vision with your life. Uh, We're all striving as leaders to get momentum. We want momentum, but it's so closely tied to our vision because the three elements are mass, velocity, and direction. And so all of that means it has to be a shared vision if you're going to get mass, velocity, and direction. Uh, If you can get all three, you'll be extremely productive because momentum is the great exaggerator. It's going to make everything look better. It's going to be. It's going to cause things to be much more effective, and it's going to cause uh, impediments to actually seem much smaller than they they really are. Momentum comes from the leader. You drive this with your passion. So where do you have to put your energy as a leader? It, it's in casting vision. It's in reinforcing vision. It's in clarifying vision. It's in correcting behavior when it doesn't lead to the vision. It's when celebrating behavior when it does lead. Uh, to the vision. Uh, Vision is is really critical. Let me end this uh, episode by just walking through a couple examples of vision and and, uh, clarifying vision in order to get momentum. Um, In your small group, you may uh, talk in your small group and say, hey, you know, we we want more people. Let's just say there's only six of us here and we really want more people. Now, there's two ways you could get there. You, the leader, could go out, try to invite a bunch of people uh, and maybe... Now, you're able to invite some more people. But if the other five people in your group don't really believe that the group needs to grow and really want more people, then even the environment when that person gets there or the new guests get there, it probably isn't going to be great. You may not even retain them. But if you as a leader say, guys, uh, here, here are my thoughts and you're listening and you guys are talking, you guys all together go, man, we really need new people. And you begin uh, all your interactions with the group, whether one-on-one or in group, talking about the vision. Hey, what have you done this week, guys, to invite someone to the group? Hey, how are you praying about specific people that God's putting on your heart? And so you you begin to uh, remind them, hey, you mean we got this goal, right? You, can you? I can't wait until like next year when we look back at this point and go, remember when we only had six people, you know? And 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 in that time frame, God's done all this work, right? We're, we're reminding people what it would look like if we were able to get people that are far from God to come into our community and able to love on them. So, so we're, we're we're using vision even in these small uh, leadership areas, right? In a small group, uh, you're you're going to do a shared uh, Bible reading plan. It's going to take vision. It's going to take some real vision to do that. You're in your family. You're le- you lead your family, and you want uh, to start uh, living on a on a little bit tighter of a budget in order to save money for a specific thing. It's going to take vision. You're in a church team, and you feel like. Your your team lacks some some real passion around. Let's say you're in charge of guest experience, and you just don't see uh, a lot of passion when it comes to greeting people who are brand new to the church. They lack vision, right? And there there are ways you now can go tackle that, and it's with painting a picture of what it would look like if your team were be able to get those things done. Uh, recently in our church. The elder team uh, spent some time at a retreat and then afterwards working through uh, a, a group of values for the church that we are just near and dear to our heart. We believe God is, is really uh, leading us in a specific area around these values. We call it the Heart of Resurrection Church. And so we had an opportunity to roll these out to the church. Now, uh, we can't stop there. You know, we have to continue now that God has put this on our heart and we've gotten to roll it out one time. We have to now continue to uh, paint a picture of what it would look like in our church and in our communities and in our city if our whole church was able to live out these things that God's put on our heart. And that's going to take a lot of work. And it won't won't be quick, but it'll be our job as leaders, as elders, as staff members to reinforce that behavior by modeling it, to remind people of where God's leading us to celebrate the th- behaviors that we see that lead toward that and to correct when we see uh, staff members or church members or, or people in the organization uh, doing something that is opposite of that. that. That's how you cast vision. And guys, if you want to lead at any level, you have to cast vision. If you want to get things done in your personal life, you have to be able to develop vision and 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 remind yourself of it to get things done uh, to, to help you with personal discipline. And if you want to be an effective leader for the kingdom of God or in even a secular organization, uh, your ability to capture the imagination of the people around you by painting a picture 
of what it is you guys are trying to get done so there can be some shared buy-in, so there can be some everyone moving and putting their energy behind an effort in the same direction is how you'll ultimately uh, begin to produce momentum, which is one of the most powerful change agents in the world. Guys, I hope this was helpful. Uh, continue to appreciate uh, your feedback and your questions. If you have questions about Casting Vision or building momentum in your group or in an organization, we'd love to talk to you about those things. You can always reach out to us in our various platforms, uh, and we'd love to do follow-up with you one-on-one. Thank you, guys. Until next time.